Welcome to Threaded South. My name is Ashley and in this tutorial you will learn how to create a vintage style bootleg shirt design in Adobe Photoshop. Now you may have seen this previously throughout my YouTube channel. I did one with J. Cole, another with Alan Iverson and Cardi B. But for this particular shirt design I wanted to actually use a current NBA player and I decided to go with Anthony Edwards. So you will learn all my different techniques I like to use when creating shirts designs like this that is very popular right now so make sure you like comment and subscribe so that you will be notified every time I drop a new video without further ado let's hop right on into this video before we jump in you can grab this template well actually both templates will be available over on my gumroad account and for 24 hours you can grab it for a dollar after 24 hours the price will go up and the link will be in my description box along with all the assets i'm using for this tutorial so the first thing you want to do is create a new document in photoshop I will be changing the size of my document to inches, the width will be 15, and the height will be 20. Resolution 300 and color mode, I will keep it at RGB. So here I will add a color fill layer and I will fill it with 0F182D. So now we're going to pop over into Illustrator because I'm going to do my 3D text a bit differently. I'm going to create a new document in Illustrator and I will change the size so that it is 15 by 15 inches. And change your color mode to RGB. So grab your type tool. You can press the letter T on your keyboard and type out Anthony. I will be changing my font to Sheep Man and increasing the size to 258. And then for the vertical scale, I will change it to 150 to give it a bit more height. And for the color, I will change it to a green color. So I will use 77BC1F. So over in your layers panel, drag this layer down to the duplicate icon because for one layer we will use it as 3D and the other one will be our flat layer. So over on your 3D and materials tab, select extrude and change the depth to 3.6 inches. And for presets, change this to front. For perspective, change it to 160 degrees. Now we're going to render this, but before we render, make sure your quality is set to high and reduce noise is checked and then click render. This may take a few minutes for you, but I'm going to speed mine up a bit. Now I'm going to edit copy and I will paste this over into my Photoshop document. And make sure you paste it as a smart object. So just in case you need to resize it, you won't lose any resolution. Pop back over to Illustrator and copy and paste your top layer that we kept flat. and edit paste again as a smart object and it should fit right on top of your 3D layer. So in my layers panel, I will rename the first layer and first layer. And then for the second layer, I will rename it and second layer. So 
So now I'm going to pop back over to Illustrator and I'm going to repeat these same steps for his last name. and copy and paste them over into Photoshop. Rename the layer to keep everything organized. Now select the first name and last name and put it within its own group or folder. So select both groups and go to edit transform skew and I will skew this so it's about negative five. Now we need to make our text stand out a bit so we will start to add some layer styles. But before we do that, I will decrease the size of his last name and move it further down towards the bottom. So open up the ant folder and select the 3D layer. We're gonna start adding some layer styles now. For the first layer style, we will do bevel and emboss. Change the depth to 95%. The size will be 40 and soften will be 9. For the angle, change it to 167 and altitude will be 58. For gloss contour, change it to the second one in the second row. For highlight mode, change the opacity to 0% and for shadow mode, change it to overlay. The color we will be using is 276. 092 and change the opacity to 95%. Now let's add an inner shadow. Change the blend mode to linear light and the color will be 1F74BC. The opacity will be 95% and the angle will be 81 degrees. And make sure use global light is unchecked. Change the distance to 85 and the size will be 95. For contour, change it to the last one in the first row. And noise will be 72%. Now let's add an inner glow. Change the blend mode to vivid light and the opacity will be 99%. And for the color use A2F7F4. Size will be 16 and contour will be the second one in the first row. Click on satin, change the blend mode to hue, and the color will be 09589C. Change the opacity to 88% and the angle will be 90. The distance will be 147 and the size will be 122. Make sure invert is unchecked.
Now we will add a color overlay. Change the blend mode to linear light and the color will be 276092. The opacity will be 74. and then click OK. So now we're gonna make the first layer visible and we will add some layer styles to this layer. So double click the layer and let's start off with bevel and emboss. Change the technique to chisel hard and the depth will be 594%. The size will be 111 and soften will be 14. The angle will be 167. And gloss contour will be the second one in the first row. Change the highlight mode to linear dodge add. And the opacity will be 100%. Change the color to 0A3B65. For shadow mode, use linear light and change the color to 276092 and then click on contour and change it to the first one in the second row. Now let's add a stroke. Change the size to 14. And the fill type will be gradient. Make sure reverse is checked. For the first color, change it to 77B71F. And then for the second color, change it to 57920C. Now let's add an inner shadow. Change the blend mode to saturation. And the color will be 8EBC1F. The angle will be negative 90. The distance will be 0. The choke will be 24. And the size will be 136. Change contour to the first one in the first row. And noise will be 0. Now we're going to add another inner shadow layer. And on this second layer, change the blend mode to difference. The color will be 1F74BC. Choke will be 49. Size will be 136 and contour will be the third one in the first row. Now we will add an inner glow. Change blend mode to color dodge. The opacity will be 100% and the color will be 38F5EE. Change the technique to precise. The source will be center. Choke will be 77. The size will be 90. And contour will be the second one in the second row. Click on satin. Blend mode will be hard light. 
and the color will be 09589C. The opacity will be 100% and the distance will be 147 size 122 and contour will be the second to last one in the last row. And click OK. So now we're going to place this first layer within its own group. And I am renaming it to keep it organized. And double click this layer to add another layer style. Click on bevel and emboss. Change the technique to smooth. The depth will be 303. The size will be 40 and soften will be nine. For contour, change it to the last one in the first row. Opacity will be 0% for highlight and for shadow mode, change it to vivid light and the color we will use is E9FAEB. And now click on contour and change it to the second to last one in the last row. And then click OK. Now we're going to copy and paste these layer styles and paste it on the last name. So right click copy layer style of the second layer and select the second layer for the last name and right click paste layer style. And do the same thing I did previously with the first layer by placing it within its own group and copy and pasting the layer style. Now for this first layer, we are gonna scale the effects for this layer because it's too bold. So go to layer, layer style and scale effects and change the scale to 75%. And so right click copy layer style and paste this layer style to the first layer group and we will scale effects again for this as well to 75%. Now we're gonna open up our wolf image, but before we do that, I'm gonna go ahead and save my file because we all know computers can get a bit wonky and crash suddenly, so I am saving my file. So open up the wolf image and rename your layer. Right click, convert to smart object and go to select subject. Then create a mask so the background is masked out. So bring your wolf image over into your document and place it below his first and last name. Here I will resize it so that it fills the space a bit more, but now we really need to tie in the wolf image with the text. So what we're gonna do is change the colors of the wolf so it matches better with the text and gives a more cohesive look.
But before I do that, I'm going to grab my paintbrush and use a soft brush just to get rid of these hard edges. And make sure you have your layer mask selected and your foreground color is a solid black. And here I will increase my flow just to smooth out the fur a bit so it's not so harsh. I'm going to go up around the ears and erase some more. So on your wolf image, duplicate it. And then change the foreground color to 000A86. And for the background, we will change it to white. Go up to Filter, Filter Gallery. And for our first layer, we will use Conte Crayon. And use the default settings just to add some texture to it. And then add another layer on top and we will change it to this one and we will still use the default settings. And for this top layer, change it to darken. And so now our wolf is blending in with our with the layer styles that we use for the name but we're going to add some more adjustment layers to blend it in just a tad bit more so place the two wolf layers within its own folder or group and for our first adjustment layer use exposure and right click create clipping mask and change exposure to 0.39 Offset will be negative 0.0168 and gamma correction will stay the same. Next, we will add a color balance adjustment layer and right click create clipping mask and change the first one to two, the second one to 34, and then the last one to 60. And now above the color balance layer, we will add a levels adjustment layer and right click create clipping mask, change the center number to 0 0.69, and then the last number to 221. And now add a new layer above it and rename it eyes. Change your foreground color to 87FB3E. And then use a soft paintbrush and change the size to about 95 and we're going to go over the white part of the eyes. And we will change this layer to color dodge. just so that the eyes can stand out and pop out a bit more. So now you probably see what I'm talking about when I mentioned earlier about the wolf blending more in with the layer styles that I use for the name so that we have a more cohesive design. 
So I placed all of my wolf layers and adjustment layers within its own group just to keep everything organized. And now I'm going to open up probably one of Edward's best dunks. Open up that image and next what I will do, I decide to do this image a bit differently than what I've done previously. So before I do that, again, go ahead and rename your layer and go up to select subject. But now I will use my pen tool because I only want to select Edwards in this photo because everything else, I wanna have it in black and white and Edwards will be the only one in color. So use your pen tool here and I am making a selection and making sure I add to my selection. And so I am cleaning it up just clicking and dragging my mouse and subtracting the areas I don't need with my pen tool here. So as you can see, I'm just speeding this up a bit so that you don't have to sit through the whole entire process of me cleaning up my selection. Okay, so now that that is over, go to select inverse and then select black and white for your adjustment layer. And then on our Edwards dunk layer, we will duplicate it and make a selection from the mask. And then go back to select inverse and create a mask from it. So we want a solo image of just Edwards. And then we, of course, we have our background image that has both of them in it. So here I'm cleaning up the areas that I do not want on the Edwards layer that's just him. And so next I will add a new layer above this one and I will call it cover up. I will use a soft paint brush and I'm using my eyedropper here to get the color from the background and removing this part in the background. So it won't be distracting once I put, once I bring this image over into our design. So just getting rid of this area. So now select all of your images and you can place them within a group. You actually don't have to do this because I, I end up taking the images out of the group. So, but go ahead and bring your image over and resize it so that it fills most of the image. So remember what I did earlier when I separated Edwards out on his own layer, bring this layer to the top 
so that it overlaps, like I said, his first and last name. And then go on the mask layer and use your paintbrush to mask away this other part that extends onto his name. So I'm just going to clean this up a bit. So now I'm going to select these three layers, the Edward Stunk, the cover up and the black and white layer. I'm going to convert them to a smart object. And I will change this layer to screen. And then I will take this layer out of the folder or group and then right click create clipping mask so that it is only within the wolf layer. And so here I am linking both of my images. So just in case I select one image and I decide to move it or resize it, the second layer will move with it as well. Open up the second Edwards photo. And rename your layer. Right click convert to smart object and select subject. And then create a mask from it. But before I do that, I'm just going to clean up my selection just a bit. And create your mask and bring it over into your document. Resize this layer. So that it fills the space. Now go to filter sharpen smart sharpen and change the amount to 291. The radius will be 5.3 and reduce noise will be nine. Change this layer to lighter color. So here on this layer where I did the black and white, I noticed the area that I wanted to cover up some more. So I just double click the thumbnail and opened it up, did what I needed to do, and then make sure I file save. And then back on my second image, I'm making some more adjustments to make sure that my placement is where I want him to be. Now double click this layer and we will add a bevel and emboss. Change the depth to 667, the size will be 92, and soften will be 13. Change the angle to 90, and uncheck use global light.
change the color for shadow mode so that it is E9FAEB and the opacity will be 48%. Now let's add an inner glow. Change the blend mode to pin light. The opacity will be 60% and noise will be 40. And now the technique should be softer, source should be edge, and change your color to 47BFDA. Choke should be 0% and size should be 49. Contour should be the second one in the first row. And click OK. So now I'm gonna open up my third image of Edwards and I will basically repeat the same process that I did with the second image. Rename your layer. Convert it to a smart object and select subject. And then again, I will use my pen tool to clean up my selection. And you can usually select the letter P on your keyboard for this to bring up the pen tool. Create a mask for this layer and bring it over into your document. And then again, resize it. And then on the mask layer, I'm using a paintbrush to get rid, rid of the lower half of his body that extends past his last name. Then go back to filter. But before you filter, duplicate the Edwards dribble layer and then go, go to filter smart sharpen to add this filter. And on the Edwards Hype layer, right click, copy layer style, and we are going to paste this layer style to the duplicated layer of the Edwards Dribble layer. So for the duplicated layer, change it to normal and the opacity will be 70%. And then for the second layer, we will change this to lighten or the original layer. And then again, select both of them and link them just in case you select one and want to move it just so that they move at the same time and they're connected.
So again, I'm placing the images within a group just to keep everything organized. So next, grab your type tool and I will type out believe that, which I believe is his slogan that he likes to use. And I will be using the font Bester Mind and the color will be white. And the font size will be 78. Change your vertical scale to 150. And I will just drag this layer so that it's at the top. And then for the bottom, I will add Raised by Wolves. And I will change this font to Sheep Man, regular. My font size will be 28. And my vertical scale will be 100%. And you can change your tracking to 1000. And my font color will be F2FAE8. And then go to Edit Transform Skew, and I will skew it negative five, just like I did earlier with his first and last name. So double click this layer because we're gonna add a couple layer styles. We will start off with an inner glow, change the blend mode to color dodge. The opacity will be 67% and the noise will be zero and the color will be white. Change the size to eight and contour will be the first one in the first row and range will be 50%. Now select the gradient overlay. For the first color stop, use 6BB6FC. And for the second color, it will be white. Change the angle to 95 degrees. So now I'm gonna select my type tool again and type out the number five. And I will be using the font Av Juliet. And my size will be 218. And you can change your spacing to zero. And the color will be the last color we used. And then move it so that it's right in between the words raised and by. So what I'm going to do here is select my design and move it up a bit just so that the number five fits.
And then on the number five layer, we will add some more layer styles. So starting with the bevel and emboss, change the depth to 303. The size will be 40 and soften will be nine. The angle will be 167 and make sure use global light is checked. Shadow mode will be vivid light and the opacity will be 95%. And for stroke, change the size to six. And the fill type will be color and change the color to 42FD89. Add an inner shadow. Change the blend mode to linear light. And the color will be 1F74BC. The angle will be 81. Distance will be 85. Choke will be zero. Size will be 95. And a contour will be the last one in the first row. And noise will be 72. Now we will add a gradient overlay. For our first color stop, use 092DC0. Place another color stop in the center and change this color again to 092DC0. And for our last color, use 4DBCCB. And now here at the top, I'm changing the opacity to 0% and then adding one in the middle and changing that op opacity to 100%. Change your angle to 90. So now I decided to go back to my gradient because I want more of the blue to be seen. So I will make some more adjustments here So I'm popping over here to Illustrator and I'm opening up my star file. And I will copy and paste it over into my document. and rename your layer star. And I will select the five layer, right click, copy layer style, and then select the star and paste my layer style. So now I duplicated my raised by wolves layer and I'm going to change this to say Minnesota Timberwolves. But before I do that, I'm bringing his first name and believe that down a bit to make room for Minnesota Timberwolves.
in here I will change my font size to 19 well here I'm going to increase it but then I also decided that I wanted to space out the letters a bit more so you'll see that I will change the font size back so that it's a bit lower So like I said, I'm changing my spacing to 1400 and then I'll make my font size smaller again. So now I will select my entire design and place it within its own group. And I will pop over to Illustrator so that I can open up my texture file. And then I will copy this texture and paste it over into my document. And of course, paste it as a smart object and I will resize it so that it covers my entire design. And then right click, create clipping mask, rename your layer texture. And I will change this layer to multiply. And then lower your opacity. You may have to lower your opacity even more depending on the colors you're using and images that you use. So I'm gonna bring mine down just a tad bit more. And that is how you create a vintage bootleg basketball shirt design in Adobe Photoshop. If you like what you saw today, make sure you click that like button and also subscribe so that you will be notified every time I drop a new video. Thanks for watching.